in a bid to capture the deeply aromatic flavours and hearty textures of Kashmiri Rogan Josh, my recipe swaps the usual mutton or lamb for whole chestnut mushrooms and black chickpeas. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sanjana and today I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious vegetarian Rogan Josh. This dish is pure soul in a bowl. You might think that the most important elements of this dish are the mushrooms and the chickpeas, but no, it's the Kashmiri chilies. You can use either whole Kashmiri chilies or Kashmiri chili powder. I use the latter because I always have it to hand and add it to pretty much all of my South Asian dishes. Um, it's mild in flavour, so you are able to use quite a lot of it without overspicing the dish. When I add my mushrooms to the Rogan Josh, I like to keep them whole to retain that juicy kind of bite that you would expect from a um, traditionally meat dish. And then the chickpeas just add that extra layer of like rugged heartiness that you want from a comfort food curry. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I post new vegetarian recipes every week. Let's start by making our Rogan Josh masala. In a small spice grinder or coffee grinder, blend together black cardamom, green cardamom, some cloves, cinnamon, a blade of mace which is the outer coating of nutmeg, fennel seeds which according to Ayurveda have cooling properties, cumin seeds, the all important Kashmiri chilli powder, and ground ginger powder. Blend all of this together, stopping halfway through to ensure all of the spices get some blade time. Rogan Josh calls specifically for Kashmiri red chilies. Buy them in their whole form or seek out Kashmiri chilli powder. They're mildly spicy, which means we can use them in large amounts for a deep red colour without the excess heat. I use Kashmiri chilli powder for all of my Indian cooking. Its colour and flavour is unrivalled. Give it a little mixy mixy. In Kashmir, the extract of dried coxcomb flowers, known locally as mawal, plays a part in giving Rogan Josh an even more intense colour. Since these flowers aren't widely available outside the region, I rely on Kashmiri chilli powder alone. Once it's finely ground, pass the masala through a sieve to remove any unground spices. You can grind these again and then add them back into the mix. Now let's make the rest of our vegetarian Rogan Josh. Pop your freshly ground Rogan Josh masalas into a bowl. Add some plain yogurt. and some corn flour or cornstarch which will stop our Rogan Josh paste from splitting upon contact with heat. Stir all of this up to create a smooth paste. Next, heat some ghee in a large heavy based pan. This dish would not be called Rogan Josh without Rogan. The name Rogan refers to the iconic layer of red oil on the surface of Rogan Josh. It's vital to the dish. For a richer flavour, I like to use ghee for my Rogan Josh. Add asafoetida, also known as hing, crushed garlic, and freshly grated ginger. Saute this for 10 to 15 seconds. For a super meaty vegetarian take on this Roga Josh, I'm adding in whole chestnut mushrooms. I love the way these look in the Roga Josh, but if you prefer, you can slice them up too. Cook these over a medium heat, moving them around the pan to brown them evenly. 
If you'd like to make a vegan version of this dish, then feel free to replace the ghee with a neutral tasting oil like vegetable oil, rapeseed oil or sunflower oil. Kashmiri cuisine often calls for mustard oil. You can buy food grade mustard oil in most shops in the UK now, but I do advise mixing it with another neutral tasting oil since the flavour can be quite strong. A little salt. If you find your garlic and ginger is browning a little bit too much, then you can always add a splash of water. Once the mushrooms have softened and browned slightly, remove them from the pan and onto a plate. To what's left in the pan, add the yoghurt mixture along with some water. Cook and stir over a medium heat until the mixture comes to the boil, about 6 or 7 minutes. Rogan Josh has become very much embedded in the traditional cuisine of Kashmir, most notably as a staple dish in Wazwan. The Royal Wazwan Feasts of Kashmir are an iconic banquet of 36 dishes. The feast can take days to prepare and calls for the greatest level of skill. This elaborate tradition is quite rightly considered an art form and goes hand in hand with celebrations and festivals in the Kashmiri community, not just within Kashmir itself, but globally. At this point, we're going to add in some saffron strands, which are completely optional, but taste divine. A touch more salt according to your taste. Return the mushrooms to the pan. Add in cooked black chickpeas. I'm using tinned because they're super convenient and I always have them in the cupboard. The chunky mushrooms and chickpeas do a fine job in giving the dish fabulous bite and protein. Stir everything well and bring it back to the boil. Cover with a tight fitting lid and simmer over a medium low heat for about 25 minutes. Mix it quite often to make sure nothing sticks at the base of the pan. Remove the lid from the pan and simmer for a further 10 minutes uncovered to thicken the curry to your desired consistency. You can make your Rogan Josh as thick or as soupy as you like. I like mine a little more on the soupier side so I can enjoy it with rice. During this time you'll notice something special begin to happen. The oil begins to separate from the curry and float on top. This is the Rogan element of Rogan Josh. Garnish with fresh coriander leaves and serve. Here's how to make perfect fluffy basmati rice to serve alongside your rogan josh. Take basmati rice in a bowl. Wash it in cold water to remove any excess starch. you want to repeat this three or four times. Once your rice has been washed, fill the bowl with clean water and allow it to soak for around 30 minutes. This is going to give you super fluffy grains and also cut your cooking time in half. Bring a large pot of water to the boil. We're going to boil this rice as if we were cooking pasta, except with the addition of a few spices. First up, some cinnamon or cassia bark, green cardamom, star anise, cloves, some salt to season the water, and the soaked rice drained of its soaking liquid. Without the lid on, bring this to a rolling boil. Since we soaked the rice, it should only take around 5-7 to seven minutes to cook. You want to take this off the heat and drain while the grains are slightly firm, since they'll continue to cook in the steam as they drain. And here we have our perfectly cooked long grain basmati rice. Each grain is separate and infused with those aromatic spices. Drain your rice and allow it to sit for about 10 minutes so that all of that steam evaporates. 
fluff your drained rice up with a fork once it's cooled down a little bit. And that is how we make perfect rice without having to guess any water measurements. Guess what? I upload new and delicious vegetarian and vegan recipes every week. Subscribe to my channel and tap that bell icon to make sure you see them fresh from my kitchen to yours. Oh, 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 oh,